We went on a Holy Ghost tour yesterday. My wife woke up, and uh, she had, she encouraged me. Guess what? Pastors need encouraging, uh, especially when your heat's out and you're not sleeping very well, and other things going on in your life, and you're hearing everybody else's stuff. And so she encouraged me, and she meant she just boy, she was just fired up. There was a fire in her belly, and uh, she said, "We're going to go see." Uh, some folks today. We're going to go pray for Jeff and Kristen, and and Jeff had requested that the elders come, so we called Ron. I mean, uh, Ed and Latonia. Ron's too far away, but so and Latonia. So we met up with them over at Jeff's house, and we had strong, powerful prayer, prayer for Jeff and Kristen uh, as he goes today for uh, he starts a new treatment tomorrow, uh, immunotherapy. But man, we just prayed and, and just made sure they understood the immunotherapy was not the answer. God's the answer. We don't discount medicine and all that good, all that stuff. But God's the He's the ultimate healer. And then she said, "Well, we need." To, I said, "I said something about you know Betty Fields is out. She's back home. So okay, let's go see Betty." So we went to Betty Fields' house and prayed for her and for her brother and I mean her son. And man, we had a powerful time of prayer there. Mary Lou got to try out her uh, her massage chair. It's one of those that you sit in it and it measures how tall you are. You know, put your hands in it. And she. All of a sudden, she's back like this. We're, we're coming here to pray. She said, I know I can pray from here. <laughs> said, I think I might come over here more often and pray for Betty. So she got a massage, and, and then we went from there to Carol and Chloe Jane's house, and we prayed for the, uh, uh, Chloe and for their family, and then uh, Jimmy and Martha Dushak, and uh, Jimmy's mom's like almost 91, and she's just, you know, she's ready to go be with Jesus. And they said the day before she really wasn't cognizant. And we came in, and man, she just was alive and, and just vibrant and got to speak to us. And we got to pray over her. And then we get, Mary Lou said, what's your favorite song? She said, In the Garden. So we sang In the Garden, and she sang along with us, you know. And uh, that was beautiful. And then we went to Pam and Gary's house and got to pray over them. And she's like, who, who, do we need to go to tonight? So I said, we got praise team practice the next time. So that, that took most of our day. And, you know, it's just fun to go pray for people it's fun to be lined up with it with god's call and to be on course you know this whole series that uh, that we're starting started back in in the, in the first week of january even though we call it christ Tomas. it was stay the course and we need to have I, I believe we need to have foundation set every time at the beginning of the year because typically in our secular world they say that's the time you make resolutions if you been smoking and you're going to stop smoking. You're going to lose weight. You're going to start an exercise plan. All these things you're going to do. You're going to purpose in your heart. You're going to do these things. Listen, in, in, the, in the, our spiritual walk, we need a purpose in our heart to do some things too. Because throughout the year, it seems sometimes because of the cares of the world, uh, the enemy kind of che- you know, he chips at you and knocks a little chink out here and a little chink out there. And all of a sudden, you know, you're just like, and you feel like, I-, I need a new beginning. I need a new start. And so... January, we say, okay, we're going to stay the course this year, and we're not going to let the enemy knock us off track. We're going to keep keep our eyes on Jesus. We're going to focus, and we're going to. But we need some foundational things to be reminded of, uh, and really, that's what preachers do almost every Sunday. They get up and remind people uh, of God's goodness. We, we remind people of God's forgiveness. We remind them people of the of His love and, and His precepts, His law, all these things that He has given us to stay the course. So. We're, we're going to, that's the purpose in our heart is to stay the course this year because in staying the course, you will stay happy. You get off track, off, I promise you, you get off track. It, it works, it, it happens in families, it happens in marriages. Once you get off track, once you veer from the course and you quit reading the Bible and you quit praying, you quit going to church, I promise you then unhappiness sets in. Despondency sets in, discouragement sets in, and then you go. Oh, just then the guilt sets in because I haven't been to church in a while. I haven't read my Bible in a while. I haven't prayed in a while. So God, you know, if I start now, it's like, oh yeah, I know that person. I know you. Finally, you're going to get it right. No, we don't do that. We say, get back up and get 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 back where you're supposed to be, because God says His mercies are not new every month or once a year. His mercies are new every morning. So when you wake up tomorrow, you know, maybe you didn't read the Bible. Maybe you didn't get on the communion call last week at all. The communion calls are at 9 o'clock. They're so encouraging. They're 15 minutes long. And we, we take communion together and we talk about fasting and talk about prayer. And it's just an encouragement. And everybody can, that possible, ought to get on that call. It, 
And you can listen to it later in the day. If you can't get on it at 9 o'clock, you can only listen. That same day, you can listen to it later, but not any day after that. But I encourage you to take advantage. Like, take advantage of what God's going to give you this morning. Take advantage of it. So you can stay the course. There's an interesting thing in the paper. This, uh, uh, You know, we have a standard times, and every Saturday, guess what they have there? They have a faith page. Anybody know that they have a faith page? Every Saturday, some of you are going, what's a paper? <laughs> you mean it's, it's on the Internet, too. Uh, but they have a faith page. I thought it was interesting this week because the faith page, and Ed and I got to talk about it and kind of laugh about it. They, were t they have a, like 1,200 pastors gathered together at this conference in Keller, Texas, to find out how to establish a multicultural church. <laughs> it said, well, it said, I don't think you can be intentional about that. I mean, okay, now we're going to have more people of different colors at our church. Today, we'll do that. And, and they, they teach you, you know, how to bring in different ethnic groups and, cult, you know. And I'm, we were kind of laughing about it because we just look around at our church. And you don't try to do that. You just do it because that's who you are in Christ. We don't segregate ourselves from other people. We don't think that we're better than anybody else because of our race. Isn't that, isn't that right? And I love the fact that we have all, all different cultures here and all different statuses and all of that. It's, it's a beautiful mixture. You know, because if you don't like it here, you ain't going to like it in heaven. <laughs> you know? I don't know if we're all going to be the same color, like dark beige. I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know if we're going to have color in heaven. We, all, we might all be multicolor there. <laughs> Who knows? But we, uh, this, this video we showed this morning about God's created us in His image. God's a fun God. <laughs> Look around you. <laughs> Whoa, He is diverse. So uh, we don't have to try to be. We shouldn't try. Just be. Just be the love of Christ. Do what Glenda said, let your, let your light shine. And when your light shines, it doesn't shine on a particular group of people, it shines on everybody. Okay? So that's, that's who we are. And I love that about our, our fellowship, I really do. So if you have your Bibles, I haven't done this in a long time, but I'm going to be reading from the message today, Psalm 119. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Psalm 119. It's a really cool psalm. I remember in, in Glen Meadows Baptist Church one Sunday, Kevin uh, Kirkland, how many of y'all know Kevin? Uh, it was his turn. We had a rotation of preachers because our pastor had gone, and so we were rotating pastors and uh, preachers. And Kevin, like he was our youth pastor, and he said the Lord put it on his heart to read Psalm 119. And everybody goes, and that was going to be his message. He wasn't going to talk about it. He's just going to read it. And I thought, well, that's cool. And then, then I found out it was 176 verses. And he read every one of them. But that stuck with me. Did that stick with y'all? It stuck with me because the Word of God on its own is powerful. Now, we expound upon the Word and, and we add some things and, and we try to make it applicable. But the Word of God is powerful. And with Psalm 119, listen, a lot of people say uh, it was written by King David. Nobody really knows who wrote it. Nobody knows how long it took to write it. But it's one of the most incredibly intricate pieces of poetry ever written in the world you start with it's it's in alignment with the hebrew alphabet all 22 uh, letters of the hebrew alphabet and so we're just going to look at the first part this morning the first 100 verses no just just 20 just 24 verses of psalm 119 i just want to give you a little bit of background about that psalm because it's it's beautifully written and uh, it just goes exactly with what god's showing me for this body how we're going to move into this next year staying the course because I believe and you've heard me say it many times I believe Christians should be the happiest people in the world we should be the most joyful and listen I understand we go through stuff listen I go through stuff y'all go through stuff but it doesn't mean that we can't have the joy of the Lord in the midst of it that's what we've been singing about all morning he's in the fire with us he's, he's holding back the waters he's you know it, it is well with my soul all these things we're saying, but all those, listen, when we go through these things, we should, we should glow, we should shine that light throughout the midst of those things because God is in us, He's with us. 
He doesn't leave us or forsake us. So I want us to I want to purpose in our heart that this is going to be our happiest year of your life. I don't care what your bank account looks like. I don't care what anything looks like in your life right now. That you're going to purpose in your heart because Jesus Christ loves me and I love him. I am going to be walking in the blessings of God. You know, a lot of times we, we like to use the word blessing, and that's what even the message uses, the word blessing. But many times, most of the time, when you see the word blessing in the Bible, it means happy. It just does. You go back, go look at the Greek, go look at the Hebrew, it means happy. And I know happiness depends on our circumstances, but to be happy, to be joyful, is to have the peace that passes understanding within us all the time. Oscar Wilde said this, Some cause happiness wherever they go, others whenever they go. You know people like that? Boy, I'm so glad they left. They were destroying my joy. See, that, I don't want to be that person that when I leave the room, they're going, Whew, Man, what is wrong with them? I mean, do you want to hang out with people like that? Do you? Do you want to hang out with people that are always griping and complaining? No. And if that's you, stop it. <laughs> if, if that's your, your significant other, tell them to stop it. <laughs> because that doesn't do any good for anybody. The Bible even says, stop your grumbling and your complaining. Because we have the joy of the Lord. He's our strength. His mercies are new every morning. His promises are yes and amen. So... I want us to agree that this morning that the path that we're going to follow is going to be the path that God has, has, has chosen for us to follow. And he's going to give us, listen, if he's, if he's mapped out a course for you, and he has, say he's mapped out a course for me. If he has, which he has, he will give you the per protection. He'll give you the provision. He will give you everything you need to walk the course through. And it's going to be up to you whether you do that or not, okay? It's going to be up to you. Say it's up to me. Okay. So we're going to continue on and stay in the course. And we're going to start with verse 1 in Psalm 119. You're blessed. Say blessed. blessed. You're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You're blessed. Say you're blessed. You're blessed. Look at your neighbor. Say you're blessed. you're blessed. Look at your other neighbor. Say you're blessed. You're blessed, you're blessed when you follow His directions. Are y'all getting this? This is so complicated. I don't know. It might be going right over your head. This is what he says. You're blessed when you follow his directions, doing your best to find him. Doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road he set. Now he's saying in the, right after that, he changes this into a prayer. He directs it to God. He says, you, God, prescribe the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Now, is that complicated? He's prescribed us the way to live, and he said, now do it. <laughs> Just do it. All right? Oh, that my steps might be steady, keeping to the course you set. Then I'd never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. I thank you for speaking straight from your heart. I learned the patterns of your righteous ways. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Is that complicated? Don't ever walk off and leave me <laughs> But see what people do? He starts telling us what to do and we walk off and leave him because we don't like what he tells us to do. So the writer of Psalms says, don't, don't leave me. Don't leave me. I, I want to listen to you. I want to follow you. The first thing I want you to see this morning is blessings come. Listen, this is deep. When we obey. Blessings come. Happiness comes when we obey. 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 That's French. You're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. Now, there's something really important about that verse right there. You see, the Word of God can be words on a page or it can be revelation. I know people that go, well, I just, and I read the, I read the Bible and I just don't get anything out of it. Hmm. I wonder what the problem be. Would it be the problem? Would the Word be the problem? Or would it be the way you read the Word? The way you prepare your heart to read the Word. The way you ask the Holy Spirit or don't ask the Holy Spirit to reveal Himself to you. So you can read the Word all day long and it won't change you one bit. But if you read the Word and say, God, speak to me through your Word. He will speak to you through His Word. He will reveal Himself. Listen, when He reveals... How many of you know... Just How many of you know when, when that verse comes out that you've read a hundred times before 
And all of a sudden, it's like God goes, it's just highlighted and it's in big print. You know, you go, oh, now I see it. And you know what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, that group gets it. Do y'all, do y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, some of y'all do. We're going to work on this side more because y'all are, y'all are good over there. But God wants to, re- he, listen, He longs to reveal Himself to us. And listen, if you don't read your word, it's going to be hard for Him to reveal Himself to you. You know, I don't know many of you that have had Jesus show up in your bedroom and, and in the, you know, like glowing and give you revelation. That happens. But more than likely, He said, I've already shown up. I've died. I've risen. I've sent you my Holy Spirit and I've given you my love letter, the Word of God. Would you actually open it up and read it? Would you read it expecting me to say something to you? Because you can read it and read it and read it. But listen, if you ask Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me, Lord, through your word. I promise you that he wants to. He wants to reveal himself. So blessings come when we, when we really get in the word. We start, listen, when he reveals himself, then you have an obligation to do what he's revealed to you. Do you hear me? If he reveals something to you, if he, he gives you a dream, he gives you a vision, he says, this is what I want you to do. Once he reveals himself to you, then he expects you to take that and run with it. So many times, well, God, just do it. And God said, I just, I've already done it. You do it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like faith without works is what? Dead. And we just, we sit around and we expect, oh, God, do something in my life. Show me something. Give me a job, Lord. And he says, okay, look at the want ads. Search for a job. No, God, just drop a job out of the sky. Okay. Boom. No, it didn't work that way. You got to get out and beat the pavement sometimes. You got to participate. Exactly. You're blessed when you follow His directions, doing your best to find Him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. How many times does the Bible say that? God doesn't call us into isolation. He doesn't call us out of the body. He didn't want us to separate from the body, just like the, those animals in those African shows, you know, where that one little, one little poor little bu- water buffalo gets separated from the rest of the water buffalo, then the lions come up, <laughs> eat the, you know, eat the little water buffalo. But the, the, he, the lions don't come near the water buffalo when all the mom and daddy buffaloes are there. Mm-mm. He waits till they're separated. Right? Now, I'm not saying God doesn't call us to get alone with Him at times. He actually says to get alone in, in your prayer closet. And many times He may say, you need, to, you need to go and you need to fast and pray. You need to get away from everything. But He doesn't mean to separate yourself from the body in doing that. He says you go and you get recharged and you come back and you bring something back to the body. Oh, God's called me to a life of, of uh, solitude. No, He hasn't. He's called you to a life of being a part of a body. Listen, a life of solitude is like, okay, I'll just cut my arm. I'll throw my arm over there. Go do it, arm. No, we're a body. He called us a body for a reason. We work together. Are y'all getting this deep, deep insights? Oh, that my steps might be steady, keeping to the course you set. Not your course, His course. Then I'd never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. One of the worst things we can do when we're trying to stay the course, when we're walking the walk that God's put before us, is comparing our walk to somebody else's walk. We said it here a thousand times. I'll say it again this morning because you may be the first time you've ever been here. Comparison is the robber of joy. Say that. Comparison is the robber of joy. You know, Mary Lou and I, we like to read books. We, we get, she, she comes up with these books, I'm telling you. And I think Pam gives them most, you know, gives them to her. Pa- books on prayer, break- books on fasting, books on this, books on that, and they're all spiritual books. And you open it up and you start reading about the author. I spend eight hours a day in prayer before I start my day. Eight hours a day. Just me and God. And I thought, oh boy, that makes me feel good. In my 15 minutes this morning. You know what I'm saying? Or you, you read this, this person, well, I'll fast 40 days every year, about three times a year, just me and water. <laughs> just water fast 40 days, 40 nights. And I go, ooh, the Daniel fast, that's like not doing nothing. I'm still kind of enjoying the food. <laughs> right? And so you, if you start comparing, well, yourself to all these other, if I compared myself to all these other preachers, I'd go, I just need to quit. Because these guys are like <laughs> mecca churches. 
Woo! What am I doing? See, Rob, if, if you start trying to compare yourself, then you know what you're trying to do? You're trying to be like them. Because you think, if I'm like them, they're successful. But God didn't call me to pray eight hours a day before I get going. Did he call you? If he did, that's okay. But don't put that on somebody else. Don't try to measure their spiritualism by your spiritualism. Because listen, I'm going to tell you, I don't care how spiritual you are, there's always going to be somebody more spiritual than you. If you pray two hours a day, there's probably somebody that prays three hours a day. If you fast a day and you'll fast for 20, 10 days, there's somebody doing it 21. And listen, when we start comparing ourselves to other people in their spiritual world, we will get in trouble. And he says, quit comparing. You know who we're supposed to compare ourselves to? Jesus Christ. We compare ourselves to His counsel, to the Holy Spirit's Word, what He speaks to us. And the Holy Spirit says pray eight hours a day, then pray eight hours a day. I don't know where I came up with that eight hours. That's a long time. Man. He says, then I never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. So blessings, happiness that comes from obedience, staying the course, being steady in your walk. Verse 9. I only got three points today. That's a miracle in itself. How can a young person live a clean life? Oh, where's all of our young people? If you're under, if you're under 18, stand up. If you're under 18. Awesome. Cool. Okay, pastor says sit. I like how he starts this out. How can a young person live a clean life? Ah, uh, they can't, right? And there's no way. I've got too many bad influences around me. The culture's horrible. Look what's on the internet. Look what, look what we're faced with every day. Young people, I mean, today it's got, I will admit, I would think it's harder to live a Christian life today as a young person than ever before in the history of the world. But is it possible? Yes, it is. Because with God, all things are possible. But you might have to understand, I'm going to stay the course. What am I going to do to stay the course to, to live a clean life as a young person? But listen, God's called us all to live a clean life, hasn't he? Be carefully reading. Here's what he says. Here's the answer. By carefully reading the map of your word. Oh, my goodness. It goes back to the word again. Out of 176 verses, there's only about four out of all the 176 that don't mention the word in some form or fashion. Did you know that? Precepts, laws, commandments, word. It's all there. He says, listen. You read the map of your word. I'm, I'm single-minded in pursuit of you. Don't let me miss the road signs you've posted. I've banked your promises in the vault of my heart, so I won't send myself bankrupt. I like that. Be blessed, God. Now he's saying, God, you be happy. Train me in your ways of wise living. I'll transfer to my lips all the counsel that comes from your mouth. I delight far more in what you tell me about living than in gathering a pile of riches. Like the lottery. I ponder every morsel of wisdom from you. I attentively watch how you've done it. I relish everything you've told me of life. I won't forget a word of it. The second thing what you see is blessings come through careful navigation. Blessings come from careful navigation. I believe, now this is just me, but I believe it's going to happen. I believe in the future, and Mario, I know you don't want to hear this because you have a body shot. I believe in the future there will be less and less and less and less accidents. Because there will be a day comes when every car will be equipped with all these cameras around it. And you can't run into somebody if you want to. <laughs> Whoa, come on, I was wanting to run him over. Yeah, you won't be able to. Your car will automatically stop, right? You, I was in a car, I rented a car in California. I started to change lanes. And there was a car in the other lane and it pushed me back. Did you all know cars do that now? They won't let you get over there and run into somebody else. So I believe that there will be a day when that will be standard equipment. It's starting to become more and more and more. All these cars are, you can't be hit from the back. You're going to watch, you know, you see people all around. You can see people a mile away. You know, it's just crazy that there's going to come a day that we won't have many accidents. And, and, and if, if somehow they do, if somehow the mechanism does fail, the airbags will be so sophisticated that you'll enjoy bouncing around in your car. Oh, is it enjoyable? We should have more wrecks, Daddy. <laughs> he says, I'm single-minded in pursuit of you, so don't let me miss the road signs you posted. Here's the problem with us mortals. God's put all the cameras around us. He's given us the ability to stop, don't sin. He's told us, he warns us of the dangers. He says, there's a road sign. You see it flashing. 
He said, don't go there. And he, boy, he's, well, I've got my own free will, God. I can do that if I want to. And that's true. He won't make you stop. He won't make you go here or stop and go this direction. He won't make you because he's given us this thing called free will. You can be about to be, you can about almost hit a wall in your faith and God will say, no, 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 I, I've got a way around that wall. But you run into it anyway because you've taken control. And you said, I want to take, you, know, you can sing all day, Jesus, take the wheel. You can sing that all day long and not give him the wheel. That's a great country song. It is. Carrie Underwood does it. She probably made her a lot of money. Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, that's a, sound, it's a good song. But is it true in your life that you're letting Jesus drive? I got a video. This is an oldie goldie. I had to buy it again because we lost it in the files somewhere. But it, I, this is probably the best way I can show you what I'm trying to articulate with you about letting Jesus take first place. Go ahead and show that. Jesus, I have decided to give you this. Really? Yeah. You know whoever sits here makes all the decisions, right? I know, and I'm always making decisions, but you make the perfect decisions, so you just sit right down and start making them. Wow, I'm honored. I mean, this feels great. Kathleen, guess what? I just got my new credit card. It's time to go shopping. Oh, really? I thought your husband and you were going to pay off debt. Oh, yeah. I mean, money's kind of tight, but I figured he doesn't have to know about it. So do you want to oh. go with me? No. <laughs> no? Why? Uh, what I mean is, uh, I don't know. Um, oh. So let me check my schedule, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, yeah, give me a call. Okay. <laughs> Kat, what's going on? What do you mean? Well, I'm kind of one cheek in it here. Look, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You wanted me to sit here, right? Well, of course. And whoever sits here makes all the decisions? Right. So what's the problem? Oh, there's not a problem. I just, I don't know what I was thinking. Really, please, here, sit down. As long as you're sure. I'm sure. Okay, so <laughs> let's start over. Okay. All right. Kat, I noticed that you've been losing your temper a lot lately. Right. So, okay, Jesus, you know what? I know what you're going to say, but um, see, you, do? you don't know the whole situation, you know? Oh, I, well, all I'm saying is that your attitude is a decision. Yes, of course, but I have a lot going on right now. Well, I know you're under a lot of pressure. Pressure? Jesus, you don't understand pressure, okay? This I, isn't working, Kat. What? We can't both sit on the seat. It's either me or it's you. Okay, I know. You know, I just, I didn't think it was going to be this hard, but here, just take it. No, I'm not going to take it. You have to give it to me. Okay, here. Kathleen, make a choice. I can't. You just did. I heard the ooh. Ooh. Aren't you glad that wasn't you? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, we're not guilty of that, are we? One cheek in it with Jesus. I love that line. We're one cheek in it here. We give him half the bench. And we'll let him make some of the decisions, but not the ones that really matter. Right? And God wants to have first place. I never forget the four spiritual laws. Anybody remember those when they were really popular? You'd go and try to win something to Jesus, and you'd use that tract. It was the four spiritual laws. And when it got to the part of, of who is Lord of your life, there was, a little, there was a little chair in there, and there was a cross, and, and the cross was either off to the side or it was on the chair. And, and so who's making the decisions for you? Are, are you making your decisions? Are somebody else making decisions for you? Are you letting God make your decisions in your life? Because that's, listen, if we're going to stay this course, we can't, we can't take the first place. We can't be the ones that make all the decisions. We've got to do the, we have to make decisions based upon the Word of God and by, based upon what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. I promise you that staying the course will go much better for you if you let Him take first place. He says this, I banked your promises in the vault of my heart so I won't send myself bankrupt. Now, that sounds, I don't get that scripture. Well, maybe you've heard it this way. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You know how many promises are in the Bible? There are thousands of promises that he's given every one of us. And he says, what he's saying there is if you hide these promises 
If you get these promises and you put them in your heart and you hang on to these promises, then when the, when the opportunity to sin comes or the temptation to sin comes, the promises of God, will, ooh, they'll, they'll well up within you and you go, no, I don't need to do that. That's, that's a lie from the enemy. God's promise is that I, I don't have to go after this way to make a living. I don't have to do that shady deal. I don't have to make this decision that hurts so many people because God's promise says He will take care of me in this, in this process. And so we have to start hanging on to Him. But we have to allow... Listen, if you don't read the promises of God, you're not going to absorb them. You're not going to hide them in your heart because you're not going to know what they are. And you know, we always focus on the promises and we always focus on the positive promises of God. But there are some other promises in the Word. He says... Listen, I will discipline those who I love. That's a promise. And that's not one of those fun promises. But it says this, if you step out of line, there's going to be discipline that follows that. If you're disobedient, I want to bring you back on course. And I love you so much, I will discipline you somehow, some way, to get your eyes back on the road. Stay the course. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He says, be blessed, God. Train me in your ways of wise living. I'll transfer to my lips all the counsel that comes from your mouth. What do you think that verse means? First of all, it means that we, to bless God, we need to let Him make decisions. We need to listen to His counsel. God loves it. Listen, God loves it, Victor, when you come to Him and say, God, I, I need your advice on this. He loves that. How many, of you, how many of you love it when somebody comes up to you and, and they've seen your work ethic, they see something about you that really, that really blesses them and say, how did you do that? How did you come up with that? Could you teach me some things there? Doesn't that bless you? Okay. It blesses us. It blesses us. It will bless you when somebody comes up. Like last, yesterday after praise team practice, uh, Courtney came up to Mary Lou. She said, Mary Lou, I, you just don't know how the, your, your testimony is. It really is, builds my faith. And how many times when somebody comes to, to you and they say, would you pray for me? Does that bless you when somebody asks you to pray for them? It should. Because they've recognized something in your life. So it blesses God when we come to Him and ask Him for counsel. But the second part of that is this. I'll transfer to my lips all the counsel that comes from your mouth. That means this. It simply means this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We could preach that every Sunday because it is vital for you and me to stay the course in 2020. That we have to change the way we speak. But we change the way we speak when we listen to how God speaks. He says he wants to transfer what he speaks to us to our lips so we will speak what God speaks. And God speaks life. He doesn't speak death. Right? Are you all with me this morning? Is this just too simple that like, I've heard this before. I've already got this all figured out. Because you don't. I don't. You'll catch yourself if you've learned the, the power of your words and how important they are. You, you've probably already learned this when the words come out that you know you shouldn't have said that you try to catch before you can get out there too far. Oh my goodness, I, I learned better than that. I don't curse my kids. I don't tell my kids that they'll never make it through this grade. I, don't, I, I won't tell my kids that they're only a C student. They'll never be an A student. See, that's, that's speaking death over your children. You speak your life over your children. You speak life over their grades. You speak life over their mind. You speak life over your marriage. You don't go, and, honey, I, I just don't think we're going to make it. No, you say, with the power of God, we will make it. Our finances look terrible. I just don't know. I might, I might have to get four jobs. You know? No, you say, God, I need your direction. I need your wisdom. I need your counsel. Because I know you said you'll provide all of my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We have to learn to change the way we speak. If we're going to keep stay the course in 2020, we've got to shut up saying the dead stuff and start shouting the, the live stuff. Verse 17. Be generous with me and I'll live a full life. Not for a minute will I take my eyes off of your road. Open my eyes so that I can see what you show me of your miracle wonders. I'm a stranger in these parts. Give me clear directions. My soul is starved and hungry, ravenous, insatiable for your nourishing commands. And those who think they know so much, ignoring everything you tell them, let them have it. <laughs> A little vindictive there. Don't let them mock and humiliate me. 
I've been careful to do just what you said. While bad neighbors maliciously gossip about me, I'm absorbed in pondering your wise counsel. Yes, your say sayings on life are what give me delight. I listen to them as to good neighbors. So the last thing I want you to see this morning is that blessings come when we're hungry. I know that sounds weird because usually we want, we're, we're, we're not, when we're hungry, we're not very happy. Some of you maybe missed breakfast this morning and you're watching the clock and you're thinking, man, when are we going to get out of here because I'm hungry? And, or maybe you're hangry. You know, I saw that on a billboard, hangry. I'm hangry. I'm going to be so mean when I, meet, when I eat my meal. You say we're blessed when we're full, right? But he says, he says we're blessed. Listen, Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So why would we be blessed in the hunger instead of after we're filled? Because we know who God is and what he will do for us. We already know that he's a good, good father. We already know that he was gonna, he's going to provide every need. That he he's our supplier. So when we when we think and when we when we start talking talking about this hunger thing, God said, "I want you to be hungry for the things of God." You're hungry for the, see. You can't get. I've used this illustration before, but again, many of you, this is your first time here. You can't get full of God if you're full of the world. You might have got a, a, a gift certificate at Christmas. Like for $25 gift certificate at McDonald's. I know some people like McDonald's. <laughs> and you go and you go, man, I can eat like 20 Big Macs on that. And you go get full of junk food. That if you put it in your if you put it in your in your trunk of your car, it'll be good like three years later. Because there's so many preservatives in it. Right? Y'all seen the y'all seen the video. And somebody comes and says, man, uh, right after you're full, like your stuff, bleh, you know, you're belching up that, all that special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, tomatoes, and a sesame seed bun. If you're, you're belching that up, somebody says, oh, man, hey, uh, can you go to lunch with me? Yeah, we're going to go out to the steakhouse. I wonder, we're we're going to get a filet today. And I want to buy your meal. But, oh, man, I love filet. But I'm just so full. There's no, oh, man, I'm sorry. I'll just call my other buddy. <laughs> You're so full. See, we get so full on the junk food of the world. We get it in our ears. We get it in our eye gate. We get it everywhere. We're saturated with it. And God says, listen, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I want to come in. Well, God, I'm really full right now. Come back when I'm not so full. See, he wants us to be emptied of the world so we can hunger for the things of God. But as long as you're putting the worst things in your life, in your body, whatever it is that are not of God, listen, if you're filling yourself up with that, it's hard for God to get, a, get His foot in the door. So, blessings come when we're hungry, okay? Then He says this, Open my eyes so I can see what you show me of your miracle wonders. I love that. Because again, God wants to reveal Himself to His children. He is just waiting to say to do more than we can ask or imagine. That's the Word of God. He's the God of the more abundant life. He wants to do more than our life than we're allowing Him to do. He just wants to. He wants, to do. He wants us to enter into that place. Oh, God, you mean you still do miracles? Yes, I do. I'm glad you asked. Yes, I do. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord thy God. I do not change. So you still do those things? You still heal? Yes, I do. You still raise the dead? Yes, I do. You still dr drive out demons? Yes, I do, because they're still here. Got to get rid of them. That's who He is, and He wants us to enter in, in this course that we're walking. He wants us to be able to walk and be a part of the signs and wonders and miracles. He said, they will follow them that believe. As we're walking the course, all those things are going to follow us because we believe. We're believing believers. Some of you are like, yeah, I like miracles. They're okay. <laughs> He wants to reveal himself to us. But I want to promise you this, and this is what he says. There are going to be people that are coming to mock you. You understand what I'm saying? If you say, oh, can I pray for you? 
uh, I know you've got cancer and you've been diagnosed with cancer. Can I pray for you? There's going to be somebody in that group that goes, uh, are you kidding me? Only chemo cures cancer. You can't. God can't do it. God didn't do that anymore. There will be the mockers. What do you have to do? You have to block them out. Jesus said, get out of the room. I'm going to pray for this girl. Y'all get out of the room if you don't believe. Because there will be there. They will, mock, they will mock you. They will make fun of you. If you say, I believe that God can do this, 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 and this, they'll mock you. You've got to quit listening to the naysayers, church. Because God wants us to press in. You see, when we press into God, we're really going to finally get to that place. When we press into Him, we'll find out that, God, you are the miracle-working God. You are the God of signs and wonders. That's where we need to get, Father, uh, church, in our walk as we keep and as we stay the course that's laid out before us. It is possible to stay the course. Listen, it is possible to stay the course and be happy. Matter of fact, he says right here, blessed are you if you stay on course. So I, this is what my, my invitation is for you today as the, as the team comes. Go ahead and step out and come, ministry team. You may need prayer this morning. I'm not going to say it's not for, it's just for anybody who needs prayer, okay? Because I'm talking to everybody as a whole today. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, first and foremost, you need to give your life to Jesus. Not tomorrow, but today. Not tomorrow, but today. But this course has been laid out for every one of us. He says, I have a plan for you. My thoughts toward you are good. He's got a plan laid out for everybody here. But here's the thing. He wants you to stay the course this coming year. He didn't want you to waver. He didn't want you to do like what you did last year. He wants you to stay on course because he knows if you want to be happy, if you want to be blessed, you'll stay the course. I don't want to have to, I don't want to, have to be with God all the time. He's disciplining me all the time because I'm disobedient. Uh-uh. I don't, I don't, mm-mm. I want him to say, well done, well done, well done. Keep it, keep it going. Do this, do that. You're doing your own track. That's who I want God to. That's what I want him speaking to me. Not Harold, not again. Uh-uh. I want him to say, you're on the right track. Because that's what he does. So stand up. I want you to just purpose in your heart. Just bow your heads and close your eyes. This is for every individual here. Worship, ministry team, everybody. This is for all of us. Just bow your heads close your eyes. You're not making a commitment to me. You're making a commitment to God if you're going to do it. But I want to tell you this morning, God has a plan for you, and He wants you to stay the course this coming year. And He wants you to stay the course one day at a time. Don't try to figure it out for the end of the year. One day at a time, you stay the course. And you say, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to live for you. I want to be a light for you. I want, to, I want to be the person of the man or the woman you called me to be. I want to live out the dreams and the purpose that you put in my heart. And Lord, this year I want to my, I set my eyes like flint on you. I want to keep and stay the course because I know in the process, Father, people will come to know Jesus. In the process, people will be healed and saved and set free and delivered. In the process, Lord, I will have a life of joy and peace, happiness. I'll be a blessing to my community. I'll be a blessing to my neighborhood. I'll be a blessing to my family. I'll be a blessing to my co-workers, to my schoolmates. I'll be a blessing because I'm going to bring the presence of God with me. And we're going to see the joy of the Lord in me. If, if those things resonate with your spirit this morning, I don't care what last year looked like, but this year, this month, would you purpose in your heart, I'm staying the course. I'm not listening to the naysayers. I'm not going to listen to my own negative thoughts. I'm going to listen to the word of the Lord. I'm going to get in the word. I'm going to, my prayer life is going to increase. I want to be intimate with my father this coming year. I want to know his promises. So when sin comes knocking at the door, the promises are going to be louder than the sin. His grace is greater. Would you purpose that in your heart this morning? Because I want to tell you, God will come right alongside you and he's going to be your biggest fan. He's going to be your biggest cheerleader. He'll say, Jerry, thank you for making that commitment. I've got you. I'm with you, my brother. Say, Tammy, thank you for making that commitment. 
Oh, it just blesses my heart for you to say you're going to listen to my counsel this year. You're going to follow my path. That's what we need to hear from our Father. So, Father, this morning, the decisions that are being made all through this room, it's going to be decisions that affect people around us, not just ourselves, but the people around us. Lord, I challenge, you challenge me, and I challenge the people. This year is going to be a year that's going to be like no other. As, I, as we stay the course, and we see you working mighty, miracle wonders. In Jesus' name, amen.